everybody. You know, we are adjusting to a new norm now with uh, most everyone around the world truly uh, working from home. There's a lot of challenges involved in this. Certainly, uh, companies are trying to work out the kinks and, and managers trying to lead their employees how to do this, how to adjust. Uh, Bill Detweiler, Larry Dignan, and Steve Ranger there in the UK. All of us here today to talk about this. Uh, you guys have a, a lot of experience uh, in this and, and leading teams of people who are trying to adjust to this. Some of them have been doing or have been working from home for a long time. This is nothing new. And for others, this is brand new. And uh, it, it can be very challenging to say the least. Uh, Steve, why don't we start with you here? Um, you know, you've passed on some really great tips for uh, people to take a look at in terms of telecommuting, how to make it easier, kind of a 101 overview. What are you finding? So I, I think that the, the point you just made, which is that um, maybe people have done a little bit of working from home, maybe they've worked from home for like one or two days, um, but now it's completely different. I think that's a really important point that this is different to just a couple of days working from home or whatever. This is everyone working from home for you know quite large periods of time. And actually that's got a really different dynamic to it. You have to kind of take a long-term view. This isn't just about maybe sitting on the sofa and knocking out um, some, some words on a on a report or something. This is something that could be going on for, for many, many weeks. So that, that means it's a very, very different uh, set of kind of criteria you have to think about in terms of team dynamics, about having the right equipment and all sorts of things. So this isn't just simply working from home on the sofa one day of the week. This is a, a really kind of massive step change. Yeah, indeed it is. And one of the, the biggest things I think that people are running into, we all are, as we're trying to, to you know, work on Wi-Fi and, and to uh, the, the technical challenges that are involved in this bill. I know you've um, talked about this a good bit and, and trying to help people work through this. What are, what's some of the advice that you can pass on on that front? Yeah, you know, it's tough, um, especially if you're in an organization that maybe hasn't done this at scale before, because that's really what we're talking about. You know, 20 years ago, uh, we wrote a series on Tech Republic called The Pervasive Workplace. As the internet was allowing more remote work and telecommuting, people were doing work either at home or away, even if they were in the office sometimes, they were still working around the clock, especially in the IT industry. So we had a little bit of experience with this, but it usually was a small group of people. When you have everyone in the office working from home, that, that difficulty really comes in. So there's a couple um, areas that are worth looking at for IT. One are corporate systems, things you can control. Uh, that's your VPN, making sure that you have enough capacity, making sure you have enough licenses, making sure everybody's tested it, making sure everybody can get access to it. Um, and then looking for maybe unforeseen issues like a flood down. of new IP addresses no. that are coming in. That, that, can be a, that can be a problem. Cell phones. You know, as we work from home, it's important to stay in communication. And do enough employees have corporate cell phones? Can those cell phones act as hotspots? Are you able to get that kind of, um, are, you, are, are people able to use those cell phones to connect if their Wi-Fi goes down? Um, web-based tools, communication apps, um, video conferencing load. If you run big meetings or if you're running video conferencing systems, do you have the capacity to handle large numbers of people, not just two, three, four doing that? Um, what about, and, and then there are departments you may not think of like printer and scanner heavy departments. If you have legal, finance, those departments may rely on printing checks, printing documents, much more frequently than say your average knowledge worker or an engineering department um, who are largely paperless. So how are you gonna support those people at home? Are you gonna allow them in the office? Um, then there are things like take home hardware. Um, do you have enough laptops? What about monitors? Are you going to allow people to take monitors home if they need a wide screen? How are you gonna monitor that from an inventory perspective? Um, and then there's remote, just provide remote IT support. You know, this has been a mainstay for the last 20, 30 years. Before I was at Tech Republic, I worked remote support, I worked in IT. And so you get very good at diagnosing problems at a distance, but it becomes more acute when you can't have people come to the office and return a hardware failure. Do if you have a laptop with a broken screen, a broken keyboard, um, something doesn't work, that still required a physical presence to do that. So, so there's things like that you have to watch out for. 
And then lastly, I would say there are also things that you can't control. Um, residential broadband outages. You know, making sure that folks have enough bandwidth to do what we're doing. I personally called my service provider and had them upgrade my internet connection um, when I started working from home. So things like that that you can't control, you're gonna have to take into consideration. And then one last point, I wrote an article 20 years ago um, around the pervasive workplace like I was talking about. And just on a side sort of note, in terms of what you can do to not burn out as an IT pro, working from home and supporting remote people is, you know, it's different when your work is also your hobby to some degree. Um, you can get burnt out on technology, especially if you're at home, um, you're supporting people all day, and then maybe you're using technology after that, playing video games. Take a break. It's important to kind of separate yourself too from time I'm going to work, time I'm going to, you know, time I'm going to try and be off. Hopefully your department has a rotating or evolving on call schedule. You need to keep that stuff up too, because otherwise, you know, it, it just like it was 20 years ago, whether it's a natural disaster, a natural part of being in IT, or now because of uh, coronavirus, you know, you have to avoid just getting burnt out uh, by working all the time. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Bill. Some great advice there. And, you know, I think one of the things, too, we have to keep in mind, uh, Larry, I'll uh, pitch this to you, is, you know, having a little bit of grace with people because uh, it, this is so different than having a dog maybe that's going to be barking in the background or kids that are trying to do their schoolwork inside a home. You know, all of it is, is uh, making it even more difficult to learn to adjust to do our jobs inside our home. Yeah, so, so culturally, the biggest difference here is, okay, everyone's working from home. It is the micromanager's worst nightmare, right? Like, how often is a micromanager sitting home going, oh, my God, what are they doing now? What are they doing now? Uh, can you just keep your video up so I know you're doing something? Uh, what are you doing, right? So working at home is almost harder because you're, you're almost tethered to your screen more than you would be if you just went to the water cooler and talked to somebody for 20 minutes. Um, so that's, that's, there's a cultural hurdle, right? And that's where I think right now we're at this stage where before you had remote teams, you had teams in the office, and it was kind of this hybrid thing. Right now it's remote work at scale. And that creates a lot of cultural issues. I mean, just speaking for us probably, we've probably all seen it, right? We, we've worked remote a lot. Um, and our team is largely distributed, but now we're working with, you know, other teams we work with where this has been a total sea change for them. So you're dealing with all these newbie issues, like, hey, let's be on Zoom all the time. Let's, let's talk, let's, oh, isn't this great, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it just gets annoying. It's like, do your work, people. Like, like it sort of gets, it's hard. Um, now my guess is they'll get over it and, <laughs> and, and they'll, <laughs> the novelty will wear off and then we'll all get back to business remotely with a sort of different model a little bit, but culturally it's a challenge. Um, I do think there are a lot of other cultural things. You know, I think the micromanagement thing, like uh, you sort of got to let go a little bit. Um, and the other thing with, with where we are right now with the remote work and, and, you know, just scaling it up, um, you got to have some empathy right? The dog and the kids and all that stuff, that is the least of our worries. You got to assume, you got to assume half your people are going to get sick. It's pretty much a given, right? I mean, just, you just look how this is unfolding, like, and, and now with that, we're like stuck in place. A lot of cities like, you know, New York, San Francisco, I mean, we're kind of in lockdown. So that alone has its own challenges where, you know, I, I think we'll find this thing where, you know, like, like I'm just kind of just my neighborhood, for instance, right? There are a lot of people who have small businesses and work in the field and suddenly they have 10 hours of time on their hands where, you know, we're, we're still working. We still have structure around our day, thank God. Um, but it's a different, it's a different thing, right? Mm -hmm. So even you're dealing with people who, who don't have structure, just, you know, and you're worried about economics, you're working about job security, there, there's so many other things that are a distraction. So, you know, the one distraction I've seen is, is just watching the news. Like we're in the news business, so it's kind of weird to say don't watch the news, but just go to the CDC site, or if you're in the UK, the NHS site, or whatever. Like we kind of know what's going on. Um, so I don't know if we need to watch headlines nonstop. 
right? <laughs> because psychologically, yeah. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good for productivity. And, you know, so, so I think, and there's not even sports, right? That's the yeah. other thing. There's not even, there's not even a good distraction to be had, right? So, yeah. so I think, you know, I think that's the, probably the biggest tip so far is just, you know, you, you got to relax. You got to have some empathy because, you know, you're dealing with stuff. So are your employees. Yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I say, I'd say, I'd say one thing is, is the, the I absolutely agree with what you're saying about the kind of the micromanagement thing. Um, and because uh, we all work remotely quite a lot, we're very used to kind of uh, uh, light touch of getting on with what we do. But actually for a lot of these teams, like you say, that maybe have never worked from home before, have maybe worked one day a week or something, but then I think it's actually quite useful to have a little bit more touch from time to time. I think things like video conferencing are really, really good just to kind of remind people um, the rest of the team is still there. Because a lot of people will work maybe just with one other person or work in teams where actually day to day they don't have much communication with the rest of their team beyond seeing them for a coffee or staying high in the morning. And actually when you take all of that away, some of these jobs can get quite isolating. So um, I think certainly maybe the first week or two of when people are working from home, especially if it's a new experience, that little bit of extra uh, touch is good, I think. Going up the kind of like the chain from rather than sending an email, maybe making it a phone call or instead of a phone call, maybe making it a video thing just to kind of remind people that the rest of the community is still there, that the rest of the team is still there, that you still have that kind of um, forward motion, that kind of like unifying kind of like uh, kind of communication. I think it's really helpful. Absolutely. You don't want people on video all the time or having micromanagers checking in every five minutes, but I think it's dangerous if you go the other way as well. I think, getting that balance right is incredibly hard. And I think it's going to take weeks rather than days to get that right. I think, and different people respond in different ways. And actually from a management point of view, the management overhead might go up quite a lot in the short term before it comes down again, because a lot of what you're doing in work is around um, habit, right? You know, when you're going, you drive to the same place every day, you get coffee in the same place, you do the same work. A lot of that stuff's changing right now. So that, that commute to work might be just going downstairs to a desk or going to the kitchen or whatever. Um, people need to get those habits kind of back in place. It's, it takes quite a long time for those, those habits to be reestablished. Uh, and, and then before you do that, that's where all this kind of like distraction kind of, kind of, can kind of creep in because the kind of, if you, once you uh, break up that, that, that routine, then people are going to kind of, uh, kind of struggle a little bit. So I think giving them that framework and checking in is, is actually really important. Just as important as making sure they've got the right technology or the right seat to sit in or the right screens, whatever is kind of just, giving them that kind of like framework again. Yeah, I, th I think what we're finding in the early going with remote work and, and you know, remote work at scale, I guess I would say, um, is that there's a ton of gray area, right? So like Steve said, it's gonna take, it's gonna take weeks to figure out the balance. Um, you know, the good and bad news of this is, it sounds like we're gonna be doing this for a few weeks, um, maybe months. So I would expect if we have this discussion, you know, a month from now, we'll probably have more kinks smoothed out and things like that. But yeah, what Steve said, I mean, the concept of office hours where you just kind of leave your zoom open. Um, I'm an adjunct professor and all the deans are doing that. Like just, you know, you can pop in and I've never popped in. I probably won't. Um, but it's nice to know you can. And, you know, I'll probably start doing something like that. I don't know if Steve's doing that in the UK or not, but it's, it's a strategy that I think makes some sense. Um, it, it's kind of like that replicates the open door office sort of thing. Um, the problem is, you know, we got continuous deadlines. So it's sort of like trying to figure out when to do that. So maybe it is a Friday mm -hmm. afternoon thing. Maybe it's a Monday afternoon thing. I don't, I don't know when to do it exactly, right? Um, but but that's, that's a concept that might work too. But yeah, I mean, to Steve's point, there, there's so much gray area right now. Um, I think the main thing is just don't, don't do the pendulum thing, right? Like you can't be psycho micromanager, but you can't be psycho hands off either. I, I don't know what that balance is and every org is going to be different, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to find that gray area of balancing act for sure. Because I don't, I don't think either extreme is going to work. Um, so, so that's probably going to change at scale too. Yeah. And you, I think you might actually find out that the ways that you communicate as a team aren't necessarily the ways you thought you communicated as a team so that while you might everyone might have like a 10 a.m meeting or a whatever um that might not be the time when it, when most information that you need is actually transmitted across your team you might find that actually it was 
three o'clock when everyone goes and gets a coffee at the same time, that was the time when actually all the really useful information got, got shared around. So, so just because you put in place one meeting that kind of replicates what you used to do in the office, that might not be enough. You might need to think of other things. Like Larry was saying, I think that idea of like office hours where you just have uh, you know, a, a time when people can talk to you about anything, that kind of thing is really useful because uh, you, know, you can't assume that just because you put meetings in place, that's when all the, the useful conversations are going to happen. They may well happen all around that meeting and not actually in that meeting. So yeah, it's like you say, it's those gray areas and kind of working out how you kind of replicate that stuff in a working from home environment is really hard, but really important. And I think what, one more thing just to throw out there that I'm discovering pretty quick, I miss the old fashioned conference call, right? <laughs> we've, we've all gone video happy, which all that's done is kind of chain us to our desk. So, you know, I think another balancing act would be, hey, here's a conference call. I expect all of you to be walking while we're doing it. Now you're going to get wind noise. There's going to be, it, it might be a shit show, but it'll at least get people up doing something, even if they're just pacing around the house, anything. Like I wouldn't suggest doing burpees while you're on a conference call, <laughs> but I, I do find the video was almost, it, it, it's more engaging, but it also changed you to the desk more which if you're working remote, people need to get up and move around. So, you know, the good old fashioned conference call could also be weaved in there too. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Definitely not burpees, but I think just going for a, a walk or pacing walk. around your own house uh, is something around. we have to keep in mind. And I know, Bill, uh, you know, our team specifically, just seeing, and this has just been our first week we're in, of course, but just our, uh, you know, that we've had two, group uh, meetings or kind of everyone touching base uh, on video, it's comforting to see everybody all at one time, you know, for our psyche, I think that is good to touch base that way too. Yeah, you know, and Larry and um, Steve were touching on this. Um, I think there's a balance, but actually seeing other people's faces, I think we started doing this years ago. We had one member of the Tech Republic team 10 years ago that worked remotely and they would call in for conference calls and we never got to see them. When we finally got a camera hooked up and we could see them, it actually increased sort of our connection to that person, I think their connection to us. And so uh, everything in moderation, you, you don't wanna overdo it. Um, and, and I also think, you know, that we, in, during our meetings, that is something we did encourage folks to do is, look, it, it doesn't matter what your background is, it doesn't matter how clean your room is. It doesn't matter if you're in your bedroom, your living room, your office, outside, your porch. That's fine, that's the new normal. Don't worry about the cat, the dog, uh, the family members. But you know, log on, let's do video for this one time, let's everyone see each other. It helps with communication because you get that face-to-face -face connection, you get facial expressions, you know, something that may sound angry, on an email or in a text or on a, even on a phone conversation sounds, you know, comes across differently and face to face. So um, it is comforting. But like Larry said, and Steve said, everything in moderation, you know, not everything has to be a video call. Not everything has to be a conference call. You've got other instant message stations. You've got um, email. We've got all kinds of different means to reach out. It's just that reaching out and reaching a I think reaching a rhythm and a pattern like Larry uh, was talking about is, and, and Steve talking about you go to coffee, you get into a pattern and, and resetting team expectations is also really good. Saying like, if your office hours are from this to this, we kind of expect you to be available. If you're not going to be available, just put, put it on the calendar, just like you normally would. If you're going out to lunch, if you're going to step away for 30 minutes, uh, an hour, uh, and in our business, you know, it's daily deadlines. Ooh, this, this story broke, this press release came out, this event happened, we need you to cover this. So it's important for us to do that. Other businesses, it may not be so important, but put that on the calendar. Let your supervisor know, let your other teammates know, maybe not everybody, but if you talk to someone on a regular basis, it's like, hey, I'm gonna step away for a few minutes. I'm going out to run, I'm going out to, to, run to the grocery store to try to get something. Um, I'm gonna go, I've got an appointment that I have to go to. Um, just stay in communication regular frequent often um but you know also you know i know i, I guess it's you know kind of against what you just said but in moderation right you'd also don't want to overdo it and sure. burn everybody out so it is finding that balance 
over the next yeah, absolutely. And it's the one thing that everyone's going to struggle with a bit and we just have to work through, right? Uh, so a good combination of, of conference calls, video conferencing, emails, just like we're used to, too. I think all of that together, uh, eventually we'll find our new normal, whatever that may mean. But I, I do think what you said, Larry, though, uh, a little bit of empathy goes, will go a long way to help everybody get through this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it'll be interesting to it'll be interesting to check in uh, again on this. You know, like you said, maybe a month from now or two weeks from now, just to see how this is all going and some of the kinks that we're finding and how we're working through those. Are you guys as, as managers of teams how you're getting through them? So we will certainly uh, come back to this topic. Uh, here in a couple of weeks and revisit it and see where we are. Uh, until then, of course. A little bit of empathy definitely helps everybody. We hope some of these tips have helped you guys out there, and uh, we really appreciate you watching.